another video of advancing with watercolor and today I'm going to talk a little bit about composition and uh, specifically how we're often faced with a challenge um, sometimes from a photo very often in the field of <clears throat> too much going on uh, a busyness a kind of abundance of things to put in uh, here's a photo from a student of mine who um, lives down near the Quincy Market and he passes by the flower shop every day. Very nice scene, but you can see the problem he's facing. The problem we all face is how to edit, how to decide what to focus on, what to exclude, and how to proceed in a way that's not going to slow us down and, and cause us uh, anxiety, too much anxiety. So. I'm working on the drawing, and in the drawing, if you uh, look at it, you see that I've organized it around three central figures, uh, the vendor and a couple who are buying figures. There's other figures in the composition, uh, but they're like a chorus. Uh, they're like uh, actors who are on the periphery. And um, the same with the buildings. I've chosen a few shapes, the shape of the Faneuil Hall Tower, a few rooftops, some dormers that are visible in the photograph, and I've placed them um, against this scene without any reference to the sky. I'm trying to, I guess, create a feeling of, um, oh, the, the big city where you have tall buildings that obscure the sky but still be able to show up or show with some clarity the figures. And so I'm taking a lot of liberties to go light in the background, at least in this first layer, until I get an arrangement, of, an arrangement of shapes that I can feel good about. And if you see the whites that I'm leaving, those become important cues to understand the buildings uh, that will be uh, darkened later on. Uh, the second uh, challenge in this is how to place the flowers in a way that doesn't look cluttered or vacant or in other words it presents a nice um, entrance into the painting because a lot of these flowers I'm putting towards the foreground and using some bright colors some light hues to in essence create a, a feeling of, of the tops of the flowers and I'm following that with a bit of red cad red light into the figures especially the main figures um, that are going to be the main focus of the painting, the center interest, center of interest in the painting. <clears throat> so you can see in this early underpainting, there's already an awareness of um, a center of interest, a background, and a foreground. Uh, it's not clear, it's not abundantly clear, but you can see it in the ghosty shapes, in the uh, light colors of the flowers, and in the rooftops towards the back. When you can see this in your own painting and you feel good about it, it makes it much easier to proceed, much, much easier to start to go into the middle tones. And as I'm doing so, you notice I'm cutting around those same shapes. I'm very aware of uh, the relationship they have to my main figures. My strategy here is to build up a light background and a light foreground, relatively light, let's say, and quite strong in the figures, uh, both the peripheral figures and the main figures. So in terms of a value pattern, it's uh, small, medium darks against a big light area. And this is a good recipe for at least having them stand out and present themselves. <clears throat> the background in almost any painting should be supportive. It shouldn't really dominate or control the painting, but give a feeling of location in this case, a relationship to the uh, scale of the people in front, a uh, feeling of the location. I'm creating some awnings that aren't there, but I feel contributed, contribute to the overall design. And certainly referring to some rooftops and then some flat gray areas in the back that I will later add um, some simple windows too. So in my mind's eye, I've simplified the background by avoiding all those windows, working on a few uh, major 
points of recognition in the Quincy Hall Tower, and the and the, the marketplace has a number of buildings that are very recognizable. I'm giving reference to three of those. The other whites that are left are just random rooftops. I even added a steeple, which isn't there at all, but it looks good, so I'm going to leave it. Um, and then I'm working uh, that lower edge of the street, or that lower edge of the buildings, to create the profile of the flowers. You see how I worked into to the yellow area and started to define the heads of flowers. I've also come to the right side to build up a bit of uh, the, the brick uh, floor that's underneath all of uh, uh, the, where the vendor has his flowers and where the people are walking. A lot of brick down in this area. In fact, most of the Quincy Market is made of brick and the buildings that surround it, the, the ground, the floor underneath, which is good because it gives us a warm color, gives us some chance to do some uh, tile work later, some patterns later, and um, I think provides a nice tone for the whole ground. Well, I've switched my brush, but I'm still working on the back of the brush, for the most part, building up the figures, trying to keep them... Um, at this point, as a silhouette. The paint, it should be noted, is much thicker, and I'm using a hue that's made up of alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to continue to build around the flowers, through the flowers with this, with this application, as well as into the, the figures. Then while that paint is settling or drying, I'll add a little more color to liven them up. When we're painting figures, it's it's a daunting task. I know it. It's um, because we rate we relate so uh, closely to figures. We understand when the posture is off, or when the proportions are off, when the gesture of the hand is off. It stands out clearly to us, and if um, if it's left like that, it bothers us. So, I'm painting them as, as silhouettes, which is a little easier. It's a You'll find it easier if you paint them as silhouettes and then go in later to bring out some lights in the clothing or warmth in the face or ba handbag or any such thing. Uh, is easier done once you have the main, the main figure. And we'll add these figures and then after we've sort of established um, this relationship between the figures and it's working quite well right now, We'll move to the periphery, and we'll start to add smaller figures that are behind the scene, uh, distant figures, as well as uh, people walking from um, the upper right-hand side towards us, just to get a feeling, sensation of um, a busy avenue, busy place. And Quincy Market is one of the busiest places in the country, if not the world, when, especially on the weekends when... A lot of people come in and uh, want to see the seaport, enjoy a meal. It's just a great place. I love it. You see me carrying that same gray, a little bit more diluted, to start to shape the flowers. I don't want to get into specific flower shapes such as chrysanthemum or rose. That might evolve, but I'm not going to force it upon the subject. Rather, more generic kind of billowing shape. Uh, with the colors starting to come forward now. A few more figures, basically start them as blobs and then extend a leg or two, uh, add a head towards the end to give it direction. This is the way I like to build them up. Right now, they're all sort of an equal dark, which is bothering me a little bit. I'm going to, um, as they dry, add a bit of water and wash them out, especially the distant figures, so that they recede more to the back of the painting. You notice that I'm also, uh, on our main figures, I've softened the right side quite a bit. This is to kind of blend it into the right-hand side, which could pose a compositional problem. My challenge here is to state the midground with some clarity, have the foreground be uh, a nice entrance to the painting, and the background really recede. Um, so far that's working, and I feel as I add some details to the figures, 
will come out more. In terms of a compositional stem, ugh, this is most likely a cross if you envision the figures creating a, a sort of um, horizontal that's broken by the vertical figures. Um, it's an excellent way to compose. It's very reliable and gives a real natural center of interest where the two uh, opposing vertical and horizontal meet. So the fact that I'm extending the head slightly above the others and into that light area makes it a real um, obvious center of interest. And we'll continue to add uh, little details now. I can measure those a little better once I start to see the the strength of the figures in the foreground. And what I mean by that is I don't want to go overboard with windows and dormers and all the things that my eye perceives. Uh, it's a real challenge because our, I believe our strength as human beings is, is visual. We really can see something um, two inches from our face and in a second we can see it, you know, 200 yards from our face. And it, with clarity and with awareness. So that becomes problematic for the painter because we feel we need to include all that we see. And in fact, in painting, I believe that more beauty evolves, more attraction evolves if there's a lot left to the imagination. And I'm trying to capitalize that in the buildings and in the foreground with an abundance of soft edges and a minimal amount of detail. Some of the things that um, I enjoy are like the, the way I created the windows uh, in the background, especially to the skyscrapers, just st strokes uh, create a bank of windows. And the buildings which are closer, yeah, a little more attention, a little more individuality, but those buildings in the background are primarily uh, given windows by <clears throat> simple strokes. And in the end, uh, the composite works pretty well uh, to understand what it is. So the tower Faneuil Hall has a clarity, which I like. It may be jumping out a bit too much. Uh, later in the painting, I'll, it's very easy once this dries to put a little glaze of uh, golden color up on the roof maybe a little tint to the, um, the steeple itself to push it back further into the painting. There's a lot of things that can be done after that. Well, here you see that the painting is, is pretty much finished, and our, ability, our, our opportunity to kind of simplify the foreground and the background, and by doing that, strengthen our midground, our main focus, I think is clear this image.